Okay, so in this video I'm going to show you the substitution method for solving systems of equations. Previously we discussed how you can solve systems of equations using the graphing method. The problem with that is, well normally what happens when you use the graphing method, the two lines that you graph, because these are linear equations, are going to intersect at a single point and that point of intersection is your solution. We also had the parallel lines case in the case where the, the, uh, the two lines turn out to be the same line. We called those the special cases. And, uh, but most of the time, we're expecting the two lines to intersect. Our solution is going to be that point of intersection. So we're expecting to get a point. And um, the problem with the graphing method is, what if the two lines don't intersect at a, a nice point? In other words, a point that has nice integer values like 1, negative 2. So if, if you don't have a nice point of intersection, it's not the best technique. What it does do for you is it gives you a good foundation for understanding what kinds of solutions you're going to get when you solve systems of equations. All right, so there's two major um, techniques that we use quite frequently the substitution method and the elimination method. So let's go ahead and talk about the substitution method here. And in my next video, I'll show you the elimination method. All right, so first of all, in the first equation here, uh, and we're using substitution method, we've got 3x plus 5y equals 3. And in the second equation, x equals 8 minus 4y. So notice what we have here. Because this second equation is solved for x, 8 minus 4y is equivalent in value to x. In other words, wherever I see an x, I could substitute 8 minus 4y because they're equal. And so that's the basic concept of substitution, replacing some value with something that you know is equal to that. So let's go ahead and replace the x in the first equation with 8 minus 4y. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this equation. It'll be 3 times the quantity 8 minus 4y plus 5y equals 3. So the x is gone and we replaced it with something equal to x. Now keep in mind you've always got to use both equations. We, uh, we had the second equation solved for x and we replaced x in the first equation. All right, so now we have an equation to solve. Let's go ahead and distribute here. We have 3 times 8, which is 24, and 3 times a minus 4, we're going to get minus 12y. And then we have plus 5y equals 3. We can go ahead and combine our y terms, and we're going to get 24 minus 7y equals 3. And uh, this is a two-step equation. We're trying to get y by itself. So let's get rid of that 24 by subtracting 24 on both sides. We'll get negative 7y is equal to 3 minus 24 is negative 21. And you can see that y would equal 3 here. Now keep in mind, most of the time what we're expecting is to get a point or an ordered pair for our solution. Well, what we have here is just the y value of that ordered pair. So I'm going to go ahead and write the ordered pair with the y value of 3. Now how do I find the x value? Well, I have an equation that's solved for x, so let's go ahead and use that. We know that x equals 8 minus 4y, and we just said y is 3, so 8 minus 4 times 3, that's 8 minus 12, which is negative 4. All right, so our point of our solution is the point negative 4, 3, or the ordered pair. And uh, this is going to be a consistent system since we have at least one solution. And since this is not the case where the two lines are the same, this would be an independent system. And in fact, this is going to be our most common case where we get a single point that's our solution. The system is consistent and independent. All right, let's look at number two. In fact, if you think you have the idea, I would encourage you to do number two and then watch the video. All right, so let's see how you did. So we have y is equal to 2x plus 7. So let's replace y in the other equation 
with 2x plus 7. And notice I'm writing substitute here. This is the key step. This is why we call this the substitution method, because we start by substituting uh, for y. That's going to be our first step. Uh, we're substituting for y in the other equation here. So we're going to have 2x minus 3 times the quantity 2x plus 7 is equal to negative 13. So let's go ahead and uh, solve this. We're going to bring down the 2x, and then we've got to distribute a negative 3. Negative 3 times 2x is going to give us a negative 6x, which we write as minus 6x. And negative 3 times 7 is going to be negative 21, which we write as minus 21. And then on the other side, we still have negative 13. So notice we still aren't simplified. We can combine 2x and a minus 6x. That will give us negative 4x minus 21 equals negative 13. And this is, again, what I call a two-step equation. It's going to take us two more steps to solve this. We're going to want to add 21 to both sides. We get negative 4x is equal to 8. And then you can see that you can either divide both sides by negative 4, or we can see that x would have to be negative 2. So once again, it's important to know what we're looking for. We're trying to find an ordered pair that's going, going to be the solution to this system here. At least generally, that's what we expect. So we've got the ordered pair with an x value of negative 2, and now we need to find the y value. So we've got an equation that's solved for y. We want to use that y is equal to 2x plus 7. And we just found out x is negative 2, so let's plug in negative 2 for x. And 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 7 is 3. And so the y value here is 3. So our solution is the ordered pair negative 2, 3. This is a consistent system because we have at least one solution and also independent. All right, so let's look at number three now. Now, compared to numbers one and two, I don't think this one stands out as um, substitution being the obvious choice here. Once we talk about the elimination method, you're going to have to make a choice now and then if you're given the choice. And in this case, it's not obvious that you would use substitution. In the first two equations, we had an equation that was either solved for x or y. That's not the case on number 3. So if we have to use substitution, we need to figure out, do we want to solve for x or y in the first equation or maybe in the second equation? And what you really want is to find a coefficient of 1. And the best we can do is notice we have a coefficient of negative 1 for the y value in the second equation. And so I'm going to solve for y using that second equation. So let's subtract 3x on both sides. We get minus y is equal to negative 3x plus 11. Let me get this mark out of the way. And uh, so we have minus y equals negative 3x plus 11. Let's go ahead and multiply or divide each side by negative 1 which causes all of our terms to change signs. So we'll get y equals 3x minus 11. And uh, so now we're ready to substitute. We can replace y in the first equation with 3x minus 11. And so that's our substitution. So we had to do a little bit of work to get there, but now it's going to be just like the other two. So we've got 2x plus 5 times the quantity 3x minus 11 is equal to negative 4. So let's go ahead and uh, simplify this. We'll bring down the 2x and distribute the 5. 5 times 3x is 15x. And 5 times a negative 11, we're going to get minus 55. And that's equal to negative 4. We can combine our x terms here, and we're going to get 17x minus 55 equals negative 4. So there's just two steps left to go here to get x by itself. We'll add 55 to each side. And we get 7x is equal to 51. 
Now you may or may not know that 17 actually does divide into 51. I'm going to go ahead and just show the division. X would be 3 here. And so we found the X value of our ordered pair. Now we need to find Y. And so we know Y is equal to 3X minus 11. And we just found out that X is 3, so we have 3 times 3 minus 11, that's 9 minus 11, which is going to give us negative 2. And so our solution here is going to be 3, negative 2. Again, this system is consistent and also independent. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our last slide. And let's look at number 4. Now, I would encourage you to maybe try 4 and 5 but I would warn you that you're going to run into um, some different things on these two problems and you've got to be careful how to interpret uh, what you get to come up with your answer. Alright, so let's see how you did. So on the first equation here, now I, I, I seem to have a lot of examples where we're solved for y. It, it would be just the same as if we were solved for x, we'd just be substituting for x instead. So anyway, on the first, uh, number four here, we're going to replace y in the first equation with two minus three x. So we have six x plus two times the quantity two minus three x is equal to seven. And so now let's go ahead and simplify this. We'll get uh, six x um, plus 4 minus 6x equals 7. And notice something odd happens here. A 6x and a minus 6x is 0, and we're left with 4 equals 7. Well, that's interesting. Notice our variable fell out, and we got a false statement here. And in fact, anytime we're solving equations and we get a false statement, that indicates that there is no solution. And so now, if you think back to our three cases, we have no solution in a case where the two lines, if you graph them, are parallel. And in that case, um, well, since there's no solution, we're going to be inconsistent. And so I, I call this the parallel case. But um, we're also going to be independent since they're not the same line. All right, so that's one of our special cases. Let's go ahead and look at number five here. So this time we're going to replace y in the first equation with eight minus two x since our second equation is solved for y. Let's go ahead and substitute that in. We get four x plus two times the quantity eight minus two x is equal to 16. So let's simplify this. We get four x plus 16 uh, minus four x is equal to 16. The 4x and the minus 4x, again, those are going to cancel each other out, and we get 16 equals 16. Well, that's certainly true. If you wanted to, you could subtract 16 on both sides, and you'd get 0 equals 0. So basically, what happened is when we replaced y in the first equation, we ended up where everything fell out. Well, that's an indication that these are the same lines. In fact, if you solve the first equation for y, you would see that. But all to say, now we need to think about, okay, so this is the case where they're the same line. So we have infinitely many solutions. And uh, so since we have at least one solution, this is a consistent system. And finally, um, this is the case where they're the same line, and so this is considered a dependent system. Now, for some of you, you may be able to stop here, but normally in a college algebra course, you've got to know how to write what all these solutions actually look, at, look like. So we actually have y equal to 8 minus 2x, and so the way we could write points in general is of the form x comma 8 minus 2x. So basically what we're saying here is you could pick x to be whatever you want. We know what y is in terms of x. It's 8 minus 2x. And so, for example, one example of a point would be if I let x be 0, 
you can see 8 minus 2 times 0, that would be 8. And so that's one of our solutions. If you wanted to find others, you could choose x to be 1 or 2 or whatever you choose. And so again, this gives us a way to actually um, express what all our solutions would look like. We're not just saying that there's infinitely many solutions. All right, so that's it for this video.